Hello, hello. Hey, what's good, everybody? Peek out here in Singapore, and it's a little late, but I wanted to introduce you to another friend of mine. Uh, this young man and I grew up together. We went to college together. Uh, his name is Eric Battle, and I just now realized he was based in the 757. I had no idea. We were like, we would have been neighbors, but I, I just didn't know. So um, just waiting for him to pop on, and then I will invite him to join us. Um, like I mentioned, we both went to Bridgewater, but I believe he went to Regent afterwards to further his studies, and um, he's doing a lot of the community, so I'm actually really excited to talk to him and have him share his, his experience, his journey a little bit, and all of the work he's doing uh, in the 757. Hold on one second, let me see if I can send it to him. How are y'all doing tonight? I think I see it. Rick. It's actually really funny. Um, we went to school like 100 years ago, and so much has changed since we, we graduated and stuff, so I'm actually really excited to introduce you. Uh, to the audience. So, hey, Eric, how are you? It's early for you, right? It's like nine in the morning. Yeah, it's uh, nine oh three. Awesome. So, what else you got planned for today besides this? Um. Well, I got a meeting with my to work for the Boys and Girls Club, so I have a meeting yeah, with. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, I work. Uh, so I have a meeting with my um my president and CEO today. So I meet with him once a month. Very um, cool. Just kind, of pick, just kind of pick his brain on on a lot of stuff. But yeah. Very cool. So you know what? I did not know you were in the Newport News, Yorktown area. Is that where you you still out there? Yes, I stay in Newport News, live in Newport News, but I work in Yorktown. Wow. Because I lived in Newport News for a little bit. I lived in Williamsburg for a little bit. I ended up in Hampton finally before I left. Did you? Yeah, man. We were. I was right down the street from um from Hop, and I did okay. not know. Yeah, my roommate. Yeah. 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 My brother. So, okay, for those of us joining uh, joining in right now, thank you so much. Um, Eric and I actually went to college together. We went to Bridgewater together. I know you went to Region afterwards, correct? And you kind of furthered your studies. What have you been doing since then? It's been a while. Well, after Bridgewater, by the way, good school to go to for who's looking. Yeah. Great school to go to. Um, you know, I never changed it for the world. Um, but so um, right now, like we were just talking, I currently work for the Boys and Girls Club of Virginia Peninsula. I've been doing that for eight years. Yep. Uh, um, I was licensed to preach back in 2009. Awesome. Uh, I'm currently a youth pastor now at New Beach Grove Baptist Church in Newport News. Um, I have two wonderful children, McKaylee and um, EJ. They are the light of my life. And, they change uh, everything, don't they? Oh, man. Kids are wonderful. <laughs> Um, and you get to see them grow daily. And, um, you know, I was reminding myself that you know, I have to be a steward over me um, so they can better themselves. I can't be good to them if I'm not good to myself. So exactly. Kind of looking, that, that's one of my one of my major one of my major um, learning uh, tools that I go by um, these days. But that's what I have going on. And um, I'm starting my my own business called the Battle Brand. I like so, that idea, actually, the battle yeah. brand. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah, so I just took my took my last name and branded it, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, one of the biggest things, I grew up without a dad. Um, you know, when he left when I was four. I was four years old, um, you know, so I had to try to matriculate. My mom did a wonderful job raising me. Um, but, yeah. you know, my dad, I had his last name. And um, one of the biggest things I wanted to do for my kids to leave a legacy. So I thought, why not brand the name? And so the Battle Brand now is um, in the process of doing some things, in the process of getting certi certified to be a coach. Um, Very good. Through, yep, through CMI Leadership, um, it's a certificate, um, and be certified through the, you know, because he, John Maxwell brand. And okay. um, so I'm doing that right now. And Battle Brand is just simply, I want to help young people, young adults, develop your other young people. So especially what's going on in today's world with, um, yeah. you know, the, the abuse of young children, suicide rate, the bullying, things of that nature. Um, I want to help. I want to help 
uh, others who want to help young people um, and by survivor's guide and you know telling them if you do this in three months your young group or your young person you'll see the quality of the young person grow better um, so a lot of times we will focus on the number and number is good but we really want the quality of the young person to be better so the quality exactly. is better so if the quality is better then they have something to live for and if you have something to live for um you know you you will strive to get it done very cool. I'm, I'm actually really excited that you're doing this. And I like the concept of, you know, the battle begins with you, um, yeah. from what I yeah. saw of your post anyway. And the fact that you are actually, excuse me, uh, the fact that you're actually um, building a community, you're working with the youth, you, you're a youth pastor, you're working with the Boys and Girls Club, you're actually able to uh, create an environment where the kids can feel safe, they can learn whatever they need to learn by interacting with other kids, seeing different cultures, seeing the way and then by culture, I mean like the way different households operate, even those are different yeah. cultures. And um, that's part of the reason I actually really enjoyed Bridgewater. It wasn't known for any one thing. It was a liberal arts school. So I got to, you had to try a little bit of everything before you really, you know, committed to a major. So that was, that was kind of interesting to me. I, I enjoyed that. Definitely, yeah. Bridgewater, I think Bridgewater was a foundation for me for that. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, um, growing up, you know, even from high school, you know, we had Caucasians and, you know, we had the sprinkle of, you know, every other ethnicity, but um, it was majority black, um, growing up, you know, African-American, black. And so that's all you really hung around. But Bridgewater really just uh, broadened my horizon so much. And, um, you know, when I started working with the Boys and Girls Club, every club that I had um, in the beginning was majority African-American. Um, but this Yorktown experience has been, um, when I say phenomenal. It's a little bit different. It's not yeah, that far been, away from everything else, but it's just like a hop, skip, and a jump, and suddenly, like, it's a little different. Yeah, and it's been phenomenal. So I've been able to um, communicate and build relationships with all backgrounds and all cultures, and it's broadened my horizons because at the end of the day, we're all equal. And, you yeah. know, and my, my biggest thing to my club members, I always tell them, you know, the world may be divided, but inside this club, we shall not be divided. And I try, exactly. to make sure my, I try to make sure my attention goes to all of my kids um, and just try to provide everybody opportunity, whether it's 114 of them one day or whether it's 88 one day. All of them, when they walk through the door, I want them to leave with an experience. And so, and it goes from myself and all the way through the staff that I have, um, you know, and, and that's the biggest thing because we have them for six hours. And I see my, I see those kids longer than they their parents see them. You know what I mean? So yep, I, I gotta understand try that. to develop I gotta try to develop as much as I can. And so and the consistency. So what 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 young people tend to struggle with is, you know, people come and go out of their lives. Yeah. And when you come and go out of their lives, there's no consistency. So how do right. they trust? So exactly. They trust? And no one teaches I, all of that. No one teaches what do you do when someone leaves you? How do you deal with that grief? How do you how do you not act out? How do you understand what's actually happening? Exactly. And that's part of it too, because subconsciously they don't even know they're at, re reacting like that yeah. because yeah. that person is missing. And so, you know, the, the idea is to be consistent. And that's why I love the club. The club allows you to be consistent because they come every day. And a lot yeah. of times the kids the more, majority of the times the kids come not because they're playing basketball, not because they get to get on the foosball in the game. They're coming yeah. because to build a relationship with the adult. That they're yeah, looking forward to those same yeah. people every day. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious because I, I did not know that you grew up without your father. And I know yeah. that has a big impact on you because my dad, my dad and mom are still married, but he was never really around. Like he was yeah. always in a different country. So I feel you on that a little bit. And I'm wondering, like, how does that. I feel like some of us who have lived through some of those things, we try really hard to leave the world in a, in a better place because we don't want anyone else to kind of suffer the way we did. And even if they find themselves in those same situations, we're trying to equip them, equip them with the kind of emotional intelligence where they can handle it a little bit better. I mean, you turned out just fine, but for every young man who did not have a father in his life, the ones that did turn out fine, there are also some of them that did not turn out that well. They didn't make the greatest choices. They didn't know they had any choices. So I feel like our past kind of pushes us towards what we should do next if we are willing Definitely. to listen. Definitely. And so, you know, growing up without my father, man, I say this, I, I tell the story all the time, even to my young people, when I first got every club, you know, I think one of the biggest things is because there's a lot of kids that grow up without their dad. That dad piece is so major. 
Yeah. Moms are always prevalent. And I, my, you know, my mom is no longer living. Um, I, she passed when I was 19, but she did an awesome job raising me. Um, and, and I don't want any woman to take this in the wrong way. Um, but at the end of the day, they're still, what they're still not a male. And so you need that. You need that. And, Whether and you're I, male or I, female, you still need your father in your life. I did. And the biggest piece about that was at one point, I didn't know there were fathers until I started seeing dads with, with my friends. And so that's when I realized what I was missing. Um, yeah. And because of it, I really didn't know how to love. I didn't know how to treat a woman. I, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know how to do. Um, finances, um, how to be respectful. And my mom taught me what she could as a female. Yes. Um, and But there were some things that a male can really hit home to you. So what I'm trying to do now for my son is to make sure he has those things. And um, I always told my kids, I will never leave you regardless. And so my, my biggest thing for them is I want them to understand what I went through. Um, you will never have to go through. Um, right. And so, you know, socially growing up, it was hard for me because, again, I didn't have that male mentor aspect in my life. Um, I tell my young people now, y'all should be grateful that somebody is pouring into you now, teaching yes. you now, so you don't have to wait till you're 27 or 36 to get it or become a man or become a woman. You can start now. And I think it's so important. Um, I, I don't know if you realize that a lot of our friends that we grew up with in college are in your kind, in your line of work. They're people, uh, men of the faith, basically. They're out there trying to build communities, and I really, really appreciate that because we need more of that. I don't think we, we realize exactly as a society how important the society is. It does take a village to raise a child. It's important for you to see different pairs. Like, can you imagine – having not had your father around, if you hadn't been able to see how other families interact, how the dynamics are between your friends and their parents, for you to figure out what's right and what's not right, for you to feel, you know, what should be the case and what isn't, for you not to know those differences, that would be very really difficult for you. And the fact that you're actually building a community with the Boys and Girls Club, I think is so, so crucial because these kids need to understand that it does take many different people in your life to show you the way. And it's not just when you need the answers that you go find somebody, but it's those people that are there day in and day out every day, showing you the way, you know, being an example every day. Yeah. And that's the consistency. And, and as you're being consistent, you hope what you have said for the consistent time, something sticks. And so when they're out there making decisions, they'll see your face. They'll yep. see when they're they remember. You know I mean? Yeah. Like that conscience comes up. I might sit on their shoulder over here or over there fighting that other conscience and hoping yeah. that they'll make um, the best decision and being real and being transparent. Because, you know, sometimes, I, I, you know, growing up when my age, you know, they never really told us what they went through or what they're going through to get what they had. No, that things. was all top secret. <laughs> right. My mom's always tell me, um, do as I say and not as I do. That don't work. No, that it doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're, my, you're my example. You are who I'm looking toward. And so I have to make sure I'm an example, so as, as they're following me, um, not just because I'm talking about it, I'm doing it as well. Um, yeah. And so, and that, and that, you know, and that's kind of where we are in today's society. We don't have a lot of role models that actually just do it. We want to yeah. talk about it. We want to talk about it. Yeah. But are we actually doing it? You know. I think it's it. really major that you own everything that's been you know you've you've lived through in your life because Definitely. now more than ever the youth. They don't want to trust nothing unless they know you've been through some things. They don't want to listen to you unless they know you've kind of walked through it a little bit. That transparency is real, man. I'm telling you. And, um, and then that's when you can grab their attention. Um, yeah. And they're like, wow, okay, well, tell me how I get through it. You know, that's, that's, that's yeah. the biggest piece. That's the biggest piece, yeah. So I saw a couple of posts in there. Um, there was one that kind of stood out to me. It was a quote that you wrote that says that fear creates an illusion that cripples our momentum. And I totally, totally agree with you because it's generally made up. All the what ifs, what if this goes wrong? And what if this really like, you know, what if the bottom falls out? What if I don't make it? All of these fears and doubts, they start up in your mind. But I feel like as a man of faith, you're able to talk to people in a way that really reaches them and helps them understand that, yeah, it's, it's in your head. You can walk through it. You can, you know, put it down for a little bit and think about what's actually happening. You know, and that's, that's the biggest thing because everything that 
you and I have or any other person is already inside of us. Um, but it's the fear of even reaching that potential that puts illusions in front of us to say, I can't make it. Exactly. Uh, and so the, the biggest thing is, and you know, it, it's for me and my faith in God and, and who I believe in, in Jesus, I think the biggest thing was even for him when he was walking on water and and Peter began to, they, they, they thought they saw a ghost, right? Okay. But they had been with him all the time, but it was him walking, but it was the fear to, to, to even, they didn't want, they, they were so fearful, they thought they saw a ghost. And so until he got over their fear, that's when he was able to get out the boat. Right. And walk to him, right? So yeah. my, in, my, in my explanation for, in order for me to take a risk, I got I to gotta eliminate the fear. Here it is. Yeah. One of the biggest things about eliminating the fear is I'm going to still be nervous. Yeah, so absolutely. I, that doesn't mean the nervousness goes away. <laughs> exactly. So, so every time I stand or every time I say something or every time I get in front of a whole bunch of people, I'm always nervous. But I know by the end of it, if I stand and do exactly what I've been called to do, mm -hmm. I've done what I, you know, I've, I've took the risk and somebody, somebody will be able to um, be blessed by it. So, exactly. you know, we have to make sure the fear of our inability. Sometimes we are afraid that we don't think we can, but at the end of the day, you can, but you got to trust yourself. You got to trust you the do. God in you. You got to trust the God in you. That God exactly. in you really puts you in the forefront. And we're not talking about boasting. We're not talking about pride, but it's something about God in you and the confidence that you should have to be able to stand and do what you do. Here it is. It's like an I inner knowingness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about standing and preaching or motivational speaking. I'm talking about even just little conversations that you and I have. And, yep. and, you know, people are people are joining or people who, uh, you know, work behind the desk and they have they have uh, people around them. And you could be able to change the atmosphere or just that one time you're in the store, the grocery store and having a conversation with somebody. And you could be able to change that because sometimes we don't want to even reach out to others because we're afraid. That's true. And a lot of times it's a, an accumulation of all the voices from your past saying, oh, you know, some, somebody making fun of you for whatever reason and you remember those things. And those are all the voices that come flooding in when you're nervous. Oh, my gosh, yeah. you can't do this. Who do you think you are? Where, where do you get this information from? What makes you an expert? Like all those stupid things that, you know, you replay at the wrong moment. But, yes, absolutely. You'll still be nervous, but you still got to get up and go do it. It's always in there, but you got to break through the nervousness. I, um, one, of, one of my uh, mentors um, he, he will always tell me the nervousness is what is your, is your your energy to get through. Um, wow, I so never I thought of it that way. Yeah, so I try, I try to take that. I try to take that with me. Um, being nervous is a good thing. Being nervous is a good thing. I think but so. I think so. I've yeah. learned to. I've learned to expect it, so then it's not so scary. So now that I know I'm nervous, it's like, okay, let me just put that first foot forward and see what happens next and get that momentum going. That's not so bad. Right. Right. <laughs> so I know you do a lot of work in Hampton City Schools as well. Where else are you branching out? I know, I mean, so far we talked about Yorktown, we talked about Newport News, we talked about Hampton. You're doing a so, lot of work in a broad range of, of areas. So, so the great thing is, so I, um, um, I, so I'm so I'm on the NAACP. Um, so I'm an, I'm an executive. Congratulations! Board member. Thank you. I appreciate it for the NAACP, and so I think the for the Newport News chapter. And okay. So I'm I'm helping try to lead the um, the youth portion, trying to get leaders in our community to get chapters on colleges, to okay. try to get um, NAACP um, um, NAACP youth members. Yeah, just kind of just representation yeah. to just kind of bring the youth aspect because then again. Young people's voices matter. Yes, um, and they and see so the I'm problems that affect them that. firsthand. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And so, kudos to a president of that chapter, Dr. Whip Maxwell, who, 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 you know, um, um, came to me about it, and, okay. um, and and took that. But also doing mentoring in schools, Hollywood Elementary, and Newport News, Achievable Dream, and Newport News. I've done those things. Um, partnered with Epps Elementary and Newport News, where. Um, we're we're working with the principal over there to do some things um, to help again young people um, and even in you know like I said with with Hampton just trying to um, help you know gauge just the aspect of um, what do young people want um, and yeah how, what do they how need can, and what do they need you know that mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest thing and um, again like I said in York County and, and doing some things you know I just. I just, whatever they ask me, I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm here. 
Um, so I, I know you've it, talked about sports as well. You do sports uh, primarily, yeah. besides, you know, speaking to them and having like, you know, conversations or uh, yeah. seminars or whatnot. You're also doing sports. Are you teaching vocational skills as well? So um, this, with the sports piece, you know, I, I coach track. Okay. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a track coach. Um, I'm also, and I'm also a basketball coach. I coach football. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, in, the, in those things, even trying to push them to, realize their potential and push their limit. Um, and even in that training, um, with, with, you know, doing those things. And, and then also to those kids who may not be a part of the sports, um, you know, preparing them for the, the, you know, the business world, yes. but, you know, with the boys and girls club, we have a workforce development program that is um, perfect major. Um, and so we send some kids through that. So um, necessary. Then, yeah. But then that was also I think one of the, the greatest things I was excited about. So I had about maybe, 25 teams that, that wow. attended, attended regularly at my club. Mm -hmm. 10 of them had jobs last summer. Nice. Nice. And I really and, feel like that's important over the summers. Mm -hmm. Go do something. Go try something. And it was, it was awesome because, you know, me always just trying to push them, them to just kind of yeah. just be great. Always, you know, they always say they want to get the bag or they trying to stack. The, I say, go stack. Go get your money. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. But, you know, teaching them that early. Um, yeah, because I'm gonna tell you one of the things my grandfather told me before he passed away. Okay, he'll always tell me. He used to tell me if you if you if you save a dollar a day, mm -hmm. you'll be a millionaire. Right? I never. Yeah. I got. If I'd have listened, I would probably be a millionaire. So before he died, right? Before he died, I checked his bank account statement, and he was a millionaire. Wow. He won't just, but a quiet he won't millionaire. Just tell, right. Yeah. He wasn't telling me. He was doing exactly what he was doing. So I'm telling my young people now the same message. Yeah. If you start today, yeah. just think about it when you're 50. Just think about it when you're when you're 45. Just think about where you can be, and just think about you just take off and enjoy the world. Just, you're supposed exactly. To have fun. And people don't yeah. think that. Uh, a lot of times you get a paycheck and you're looking at the next pair of Jordans and the first thing you can spend your money on. But even if it's not a dollar, if you learn to save early, just period, it makes right? such just a period. difference. Just so it's in that. I wish I'd have learned that back in the day, you yeah. know, I wouldn't yep. be, and that's one of the things I'm telling my, I'm, I want to pour into my kids. I wish I'd have learned, I wish I'd have done exactly what my grandfather told me to do. Cause I wouldn't, some of the stuff I went through or even going through, I wouldn't be going through if I'd have just listened. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't take it seriously. I mean, I've thought about it a couple of times when I was in college and I, you know, I didn't act on it. And then that's the difference. Yeah. There wasn't somebody on it. Like, no, go do this now. <laughs> Them college loans is real. You hear me? Uh huh. <laughs> and then when we got to college, they were real happy about. Oh, why don't you get a credit card? It'd be real easy. Like everybody had their hand out, and you were like, "Oh, yeah, credit card." No, no, yeah, don't so do it. No one, <laughs> no one really taught us what to do and how to use it. Messed us yeah. up. So, um, you know, and that's we learned the hard thing. way. Please Definitely. don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> exactly. If you're a young person and you're listening, it's please don't make the same mistakes. Shoot, even some adults, you know. Yep. Um, if you got that opportunity, please do not make the same mistakes that we made. Very cool. So I'm curious, do you have any um, any programs that are upcoming that people should really take note of? I know you're all you, you're always moving and shaking. You always got something going on, um, but I don't know if there are any like events that are maybe coming up that people should be taking down notes on the dates that are coming up, maybe. So I I do have some stuff, but I just can't really release it right now. Not yet. Okay. No. Right. Yeah. Well, then they need to pay but, attention to your your. Yeah. 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 So they need to pay attention. I got some stuff coming. The okay. uh, World is going to take notice. Well, first Luper News, Hampton, York County, Williamsburg. We got. Let's some get that seven five seven. Yep. Way. Yep. Seven <laughs> five seven. We got some stuff on the way. Listen, if you want to become a coach or you want to do something real great, I got I got a great a great guy. His name is uh, Dr. Dwight Surratt Riddick the second um and he is uh, my mentor he is one of my one, one, one of my good friends but he's also a leader in this community and he's helping other people birth their potential because okay. we always talk about potential potential does nothing until it's used everybody has potential they can't do yep. anything everybody so yep you need work ethic everybody with it <laughs> and so he pushes and so the biggest thing is he's been pushing me um we have something great planned um he's okay. helping me along the way and so i can't wait to release it so some stuff is going to come out. We're talking about, we talking about books. We're so you know what this means, right, Eric? You need to let me know when you're about to drop it so we can get back on here and gotcha. tell everybody. So we can get back on here and yep. I can push it and we can sell it. 
to get it out. So we, to, we're excited. We're excited about it. Um, okay. We're constantly moving and we're constantly thinking. Big event is coming. Um, but the biggest thing is I, I, I mentor on Mondays um, okay. um, with, with the elementary schools. Um, I'm also, too, um, working, working part-time with um, uh, autistic young, young men and women um, okay. for this company called Positive Support with Children with Autism. They do a great job. And they also they also come to my club as well. Again, we're Good. exclusive. We're, we're not ex, we're not inclusive. We're exclusive. So no, I mean we're not exclusive. We're inclusive. So I we got you. everybody. Yep, yeah, everybody. Got you. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody welcome. Everybody could be a part of our um, program, and so we're excited about that. Some things going on with that company as well. So we, you know, like I said, we're just just trying to grind. We're trying to give our young people hope um, and the future. I love because, it. Um, yeah. That's amazing, though. Uh, Boys and Girls Club has been around forever, but the fact yes. that I know somebody that's actually you know, a, a leader in that movement, that makes a big yeah. difference to me. So anybody in the 757, please, please, please go look up Eric at the Yorktown Boys and Girls Club. He's doing big things. He's trying really hard to be somebody that people can lean on a little bit when they need to because he's, yeah. he's seen life. He's seen a little bit of life already, so he knows what I, he's talking I've, about. I've seen it all. I've seen it all, man, and uh, we thank, um, you know, and all the Boys and Girls Clubs, man, there's a whole bunch yeah. over the 757, um, so there's always some across the water, um, but we, you know, my 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 organization, we have a lot um, right now, like 13 clubs, so you've right. got a young person who hasn't been a part of it, it's great, we provide opportunities like never before, um, Good. yeah, and so we want your kids to know their potential and leave better responsible exactly. and productive citizens in today's society. And more than that, I'm actually really excited that you're, you're pulling in that emotional intelligence piece together with your, your work of faith. I really do appreciate that. Um, yeah. And y'all realize, right, I'm in Singapore. I'm on the other side of the earth, okay? Right. So y'all have no yeah. excuse. Y'all are in the 757. Go find yeah. him. Go get yeah. it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peak is all the way. It is 10 o'clock. Almost it's 10.30. 10 p.m. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's ten thirty at night. It's all good. The time don't mean nothing. No, it doesn't. I do appreciate you allowing me to come on. Not a problem. You. Um, excited. It's about. been nice to reconnect. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And I've seen what you did with Corey on not not too long ago. Um, it's so. nice to see all of our class, like whether it was you know within the four year span that we were at school together. Right, it's right, nice right. to see what everyone's doing right now. Y'all are all most of y'all are all leaders in the community. Y'all are all yep. doing big things. I'm really proud of you guys. Back. I didn't know, say none, none of us are, you know, big stars. None of us are Michael Vicks or the Alan Havisons and things of that nature. But this is where I grew up, and I feel like I need You're to get back somewhere. You're making a difference. Somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, You're yeah. making a difference. Definitely. I appreciate your time. I really do. You guys, Thank please you, follow it. Eric and his battle brand. I really like that. Battle I like brand. the sound of that a lot. Battle yes, brand. exactly. Battle begins um, with you. All you need go is Go check him push. out. Yes. Thank All right, you. Eric. Thank you so much. You take care, okay? And keep it. Let me know when you're ready to drop that news, and we'll get back on I it. I definitely will. Definitely will. Okay. You take care. Bye.